guys welcome back to the contented plant today we are talking all about the Merdania loriformis some people call this the angel grass plant some people call this a bright star it's a really cute little house plant so let's get started so this plant is native to the tropical and subtropical areas of Asia. This plant is used in traditional Chinese medicine. The foliage is thought to help with respiratory symptoms and get rid of toxins from the body. And now people just keep it as a really fun house plant. So this plant is a member of the Tradescantia family. So if you have watched any of my previous videos, we've talked about the Tradescantia zebrina for, they're really pretty and they kind of have a really similar growing pattern. You can see how the leaves come out. It's very similar. Something really neat about this plant is it does occasionally flower from the stems here. You can see it comes right out where that new leaf is coming from. Occasionally they will just send out little shoots of flowers or blooms. So this plant isn't super variegated, but you can see that it does have a few color differences on the leaves where it kind of has this silvery gray and then it fades out to this darker green area. This plant loves to be in bright light. If you have it in a low light area, you might find that it starts to grow really slowly. It might not bloom. And a lot of times it will also lose that striking variegation that's on those leaves. The colors will kind of fade and they won't be as brilliant and bright. Although this plant does enjoy bright indirect light, if you have it sitting in direct sunlight for too long, you do risk scorching those beautiful leaves. They can get sun damage from sitting in direct sunlight. So this plant does not need to be watered every week or so. You can let the top third of the soil dry out. It doesn't need to be super saturated all the time. I would keep this plant in a nice, light, quick draining soil mix. So what I would do is 60% potting mix and maybe 30% perlite, maybe a little bit of orchid bark in there, but a smaller amount than I would use for my typical aeroid plants. This plant does kind of grow into a bushy trailing pattern. And you can see right now it just has two arms, but if I let this grow, it will kind of come out as well and it's just gonna keep getting bushier and start to want to be kind of a trailing plant. This plant is susceptible to root rot like most house plants, so you do not want to let really heavy saturated soil sit around those roots or those roots may rot and end up killing your beautiful plants. This one needs about average humidity. I would not miss this plant too much. That is kind of susceptible to powdery mildew. You can see it has these beautiful leaves with lots of space for water to sit, and you don't wanna risk that happening to your plant. Probably your average humidity in your house is just fine. If you notice that the tips are kind of browning and it's not looking very good, you could try placing a small humidifier nearby or do a pebble tray with some water in it. During the growing period of spring and summer, I would definitely keep fertilizing it every four to six weeks if you're really looking to see some of that growth. Because this is a plant that blooms a lot, that really will help support the foliage and make it the most beautiful that this plant can be. When you water this plant, this plant prefers lukewarm water and not cold. This plant can get cold shock if you were to put very cold tap water straight into the soil. This plant is susceptible to pests like most house plants. So when you're watering or cleaning those leaves, always take a look underneath and see if you see any signs of new pests moving in. This could be spider mites, thrips, any tiny little pest can go underneath there. They love the underside of the leaves. That's where they usually tend to hang out. So a good practice is when you're watering, go ahead and do a leaf check just really quickly. Or if you start to see signs of damage, get it when it's really small. You don't wanna wait until your plant is looking very, very damaged because then you might have an infestation that is just too large to control. 
I would definitely make sure that you dust your leaves. You can see that they have a lot of surface space and they can collect dust and dirty leaves do tend to attract spider mites. So what I like to do is once a month or so, I will take a wet paper towel and very gently just kind of work my way through every single leaf and give it a really good dusting. That also helps the plant photosynthesize better and it'll just make your plant a little bit healthier. To propagate this plant, it's a lot like a regular Tradescantia plant. The easiest way to do it is to take a vine cutting. So right here where these joints are, you can kind of feel little bumps and those are nodes. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to cut between that internodal spacing and then you're going to just stick it in a jar of water and you can let it propagate that way. It'll usually take a few weeks to start seeing roots emerge or you can go ahead and propagate it straight into moist soil. Just make sure that while your new baby propagation is growing roots that you keep that soil mix nice and moist. This plant is non-toxic to both humans and pets, so you can keep it down low and not worry about anybody taking a nibble off of those leaves. Overall, this is a very simple plant to grow and care for, and it shouldn't give you too much trouble as long as you have it in the appropriate soil mix and you keep it in bright enough light, you should be just fine. Just remember that watering is important, but you do not want to overwater this plant and give it root rot. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions on taking care of this plant, please leave them down below and I will do my best to answer them for you. You can follow me on Instagram at The Contented Plant. Otherwise, have a wonderful day. Please like and subscribe and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.